Okay, so we're talking about restless leg syndrome. Those crampies that so many people get in the nighttime, evening time. You know, it's not just about electrolyte issues, electrolyte balance, calcium balance, magnesium imbalance. Often that's what's given to people and what's recommended, but it often doesn't work, right? Uh, in fact, there's good evidence suggesting that restless leg syndrome is actually related to dysfunction in a part of the brain called the basal ganglia. The reason being is that this area of the brain called the basal ganglia uses a nerve messenger called dopamine. You may have heard of that reward response guy for us to control muscle activity. And we often we hear about dopamine, you know, lack of dopamine in uh, Parkinson's disease, right? But um, lack of dopamine can affect a lot of other things too. And you know, in an otherwise healthy person, dopamine levels naturally have a trajectory downwards. And they decrease toward the ends of, to, towards the ends of our day. So it's normal to have lower dopamine in the evening versus the day. Uh, this would be you know why restless, restless leg syndrome is experienced much worse in the evening and through the night versus you know middle of the day morning time when more than likely dopamine levels are higher compared to the evening time so before diving you know super deep into it or deeper uh, i do want to mention that iron deficiency underactive thyroid chronic kidney disease uh, fibromyalgia uh, cardiovascular disease, low magnesium levels, low phosphorus levels, or imbalances there, imbalances in calcium, can indeed, um, and do indeed, play a role. Um, even sodium potassium imbalances can play a role in restless leg syndrome and, you know, propagating it. So it's not, even though many of these things do go back to dopamine, it, it can be other things, um, but, but dopamine is a huge player. And there's also a host of things that can worsen restless leg syndrome. Things like alcohol use, uh, being obese, uh, that is carrying excess inflammatory fat on our bodies, uh, you know, caffeine, smoking, uh, antihistamine use, you know, those are the medications often used for allergies or even um, acid reflux, uh, along with it, pretty much any antipsychotic you can think of, any antidepressant you can think of. Uh, virtually all of these medications uh, can exasperate or, or kind of trigger or, or bring on um, worse uh, restless leg syndrome. So in thinking about uh, the first one I mentioned, iron deficiency leading to restless leg syndrome, consider that low iron levels in the blood can lead to a significant drop in that neurotransmitter we've been talking about, dopamine. So it may not just be that you know oxygen's not getting to the to the cells or whatever. It may be that there's a drop in brain dopamine levels that's causing this. You know, and this might be why you know in iron deficiency there's also often depression, anxiety uh, when a person's iron levels are low. So there's you know we just we're learning so much all the time, right? Uh, and none, none of this stuff is set in stone. So if you've gone through the electrolyte route, you've uh, you know tried magnesium. You've been doing consistent uh, exercise, dropped your caffeine, uh, stopped smoking, you're, you're free of alcohol, uh, and man, you've been you know, at it for a while, then you may want to look at supporting your dopamine, dopamine activity and you know, picking up that amount and having that, that, that level in the evening time being, being a little higher. So tyrosine, uh, which you may have heard of previously to support thyroid activity, is the direct precursor to L-DOPA. And L-DOPA is the precursor to dopamine. It is, it is what's converted into dopamine. And uh, you know, if you have dopamine, we're good to go, right? So I've seen tyrosine supplementation in my own patients uh, be very helpful in, in multiple cases uh, where restless leg syndrome was not responding to a lot of the other you know, first line things we think about, like the iron, like thyroid. Um, like magnesium and calcium, these kind of things. So, of course, if tyrosine does help uh, when you take it, then it would be highly suggested that your the the problem you're 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 having is with dopamine activity and dopamine creation creation, or um, maybe a a 
too great of a decrease in dopamine uh, in the evening time. And there's actually a study showing that there, in people with restless leg syndrome, there can be a four times greater difference in daytime dopamine compared to nighttime dopamine. So daytime it's here, um, and then nighttime is way down here. Uh, and you know that if there's this huge swing in dopamine levels during the day, you know coming to the night, then yeah, you're way more likely to have restless leg syndrome. And this is this difference between daytime dopamine and nighttime dopamine, as well as other research showing that excessive glutamate activity uh, is, has been found in restless leg, restless leg patients, I, I suggest that should encourage us to you know, look at our lifestyle if you are experiencing restless leg syndrome, look at our habits, uh, and say, you know what, maybe that is the true cure to restless leg syndrome. Uh, not that, not, not that you shouldn't use a tire machine and give that a go, but, um, maybe lifestyle is where it's at. And on that front, low brain iron can be a contributor to excess glutamate activity. So be sure to get your iron levels checked. Don't overlook that one. So common. Uh, if your, if your iron levels are good to go, then I would encourage you to look at what is my stress response? You know, how am I coping with stress, anxiety, these kind of things, uh, life margin, what, what's my digestive system looking like? How, how, how's activity there? Um, my, what's my stimulant intake like? And I would say that's like chocolate, flour, added sugars, as well as, um, you know, caffeine. Uh, what's my exercise routine like? And, and on the exercise front, aggressive exercise is actually shown to be kind of a problem with restless leg syndrome. So if you're uh, exercising really aggressively about two hours before bed, probably a bad idea if you have restless leg syndrome. Okay, bring that back, get it, you know, four, six, eight hours before bed. Um, then the exercise can be quite advantageous for you and decrease your risk of restless leg syndrome. So, but right before bed, not a good idea. Uh, and interestingly, I'm talking about digestion, uh, people who have irritable bowel syndrome uh, and those who've been treated with small intestine, for small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, which is basically a, a bacterial infection of the small intestine showed benefits for Russ's leg syndrome. So in fact, 80% of participants who had small intestinal bacterial overgrowth and had irritable, irritable bowel syndrome actually got relief from the Russ's leg syndrome when they were treated appropriately for those, for the IBS and the SIBO. Pretty wild, huh? So potentially, restless leg syndrome, you know, could be underlying like, like a chronic infection. And I mentioned iron deficiency earlier, I keep coming back. One thing that can affect one's capacity to absorb and utilize iron is the level of a protein called hepcidin uh, in the blood. And the higher the hepcidin level is, the less capacity you have. And, and basically, the, the, you're getting signaled to stop iron uptake. Uh, and hepcidin elevation is correlated with uh, inflammation and uh, a slow detoxification or any, almost like liver irritation. So we don't want too much hepcidin because then we can't get enough iron in. And you know, the reason being that it's, it's high is often related to inflammation and poor liver detoxification. So that goes even deeper, right? Another layer for us to consider as to why you may be experiencing restless leg syndrome. And hepcidin levels, uh, guess what? They're shown to be high in many people with restless leg syndrome. So not even, you know, potentially um, a person might look at their iron level and say, oh, okay, uh, my iron levels are fine. But because of inflammation, because of detoxification issues, their, their hepcidin level is high. And that's a sign that say, hey, we gotta help phase one and phase two detoxification, detoxification in the liver. And we need to look at, you know, how can I clean up my lifestyle, both physically and mentally, emotionally, to uh, make sure that irritation on my being, inflammation in my body is at a minimum. And, and there, there's none of this chronic, chronic excessive, uh, you know, potentiation of inflammation and excess inflammation uh, or, or underlying infect chronic infections, which are, um, you know, increasing hepcidin and, and uh, decreasing dopamine levels. So that's high, high value right there, folks. Uh, now, as we're going along today, it can feel like restless leg syndrome therapy, you know, it's just getting more and more complex. And I know I'm throwing a lot at you in this video, uh, which, which I say, you know, it is, it's, it kind of is getting more complex. However, 
many people will see great results with just proper hydration, proper exercise, get iron levels balanced, magnesium levels balanced, calcium, some, some electrolyte support, tyrosine, utilizing tyrosine, um, even using L-theanine, which I talked about previously um, on one of the sleep videos and uh, you know how it benefits sleep and stress response. And L-theanine, L-theanine can decrease that excess glutamate activity that I talked about um, a few minutes ago. And of course, that excess glutamate activity potentiates restless leg syndrome and uh, L-theanine can slow it down. L-theanine can also increase GABA activity which supports the parasympathetic dominant state of the body, which brings more rest relaxation response in the body, which of course, if there's more rest, more relaxation happening, you're less likely to have restless leg syndrome. So on another video, I will dive into, you know, other aspects of restless leg syndrome because it is a lot bigger than just what's happening, you know, in the evening time. There's, there's a reason that's happening. And uh, there's some definitely research on the cardiovascular front and, you know, potential issues with rust leg syndrome and, and underlying cardiovascular issues and um, how it could potentially be a first sign of, of a person needing to really support and consider, I mean, what is the status of my cardiovascular system? How am I helping it out? How's my heart doing? How's my, how's my uh, circulation doing? Uh, and we can definitely go over that. But um, do you have plenty to think about today related to restless leg syndrome and, you know, the health opportunity that's sitting out there for you if you do have restless leg syndrome? Because restless leg syndrome, man, it just makes sleep terrible. Uh, you know, I've never experienced it, but I have many patients who have experienced it and it is, it is very, very undesirable. And I would not want you to be, uh, having to just go on and on and on and on without, uh, you know, experiencing a cure to restless leg syndrome. So if it's been helpful, you know what, please like this, please share, please, uh, send it out to your buddies and, and family because, uh, you know, I don't want to stop accumulating health. You don't want to stop accumulating health. And one of the ways that really helps each of us accumulate more health is if we get all the people around us accumulating, accumulating mass amounts of health. It's a beautiful thing. And you don't want anybody else to be out there, you know, without the proper essential information to make crazy good decisions about their health. All right. I'll talk to you guys later.